Welcome back. All right, so take 12, I think this is. See if I can get through this one. I, I don't know why. It's just it, some some days it's tough for me to get the videos going and get myself rolling. And since I don't use the script, I find myself going, nope, and just hit the stop button. Um, and, and people always say, oh, why don't we see the outtakes? Because they're, they're not entertaining. It's just me rolling my eyes go, nope, and then I just stop. So I wanted to talk a bit about hate as like a follow-up to last night's video. And that was a video that I had debated about whether or not to post last night or do today, but I just I decided to do it last night. So I'll do the follow-up today. Um, and, and hate that player or fans have for certain teams and players, uh, it can change over the years. I talked about that in the video yesterday. Um, there were some, some, some kind of ugly comments that I saw directed towards me. I knew you always hated my team. What? Uh, for Oilers fans, remember, the objective list, which was the teams I should hate, uh, based on playoff results, the Oilers finished first. In the subjective, meaning the team that I've actually hated over the last 45 years, the Oilers were, I think, sixth. So, they were not first. When I saw you, I knew you hated us the most, so you didn't watch the video. Got it. Um, and that's, that's when I know. That's when I take those comments and go, all right, so that's held for, uh, we're just going to. Gonna, gonna gonna delete that um anyways i want to talk about where where hate can come from you guys can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as well uh the first thing that i think adds to hate is playoff series and and playoff series are always interesting to me because every playoff series has its own personality and its own flow now playoff series now i've got the the closest to rivals i think for teams that i root for so montreal boston Right, if you're watching the historical videos, I do this, and it means bad matchup for Boston. Uh, Vancouver-Calgary, which honestly over the years has been kind of a bad matchup for Vancouver. However, uh, in, in terms of Stanley Cup runs where they've gotten to the final, um, beating the Calgary Flames was important. In two of those three, they beat them in the first round. Uh, and then there's St. Louis and Dallas. Now, I mentioned this last night, too. I, I don't hate St. Louis. I never have. But traditionally, that's been the team that's been kind of the nemesis for the Dallas Stars. And that can that can lead to you deciding, I really don't like that team. And sometimes it's just that one single playoff series, right? Where you're like, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't want to see them win. Anybody but them starts to take over. And that's when you know that the hate's starting to ramp up. Uh, number two on the list, also certain players. Um, Marshawn gets mentioned a lot when I talk about being a Boston fan. You don't have to root for every single player on a team. Like Marshawn, over the last five years, I would say, I, I like him more now than I did. Uh, I think that a lot of the stuff that people get mad at him about are from, is from a while ago. It may not feel like it's that long ago, but at any rate, I get it. I totally get it. But when a player that I don't like goes to a team that I do, it doesn't necessarily mean I like that player all of a sudden. I'm not tribal that way at all. If a player joins the Canucks and I don't like the player, I just decide, well, I, I still don't like the guy, but he's on the Canucks, so we'll see how it goes. And that's about it. And then if it works out well, I'll kind of shrug and go, all right, well, it worked out well. I may still not like the player, but I can root for the team that he's on. Uh, luck. Luck is one that absolutely I understand. And by luck, I mean like the, the puck takes a weird bounce off a stanchion. Maybe it hits the ref and it goes right to the other team. And then the puck's in the back of the net. A play where nobody can anticipate it. Goalie's not ready. It's just, it's a disaster. And when that happens in like overtime or a really key moment in the game, you can get really mad at the other team. And the reality is that, you know, it's not like the other team made that luck happen with like a Ouija board behind the bench or something. They just... They, they got they got a lucky a lucky bounce right um and maybe your team didn't get that lucky bounce maybe maybe the bounce off the ref went to the other team who cleared the puck when they were cycling on a power play and had a chance to, to win the game right so both good luck and bad luck can can lead to you deciding you know what I, I don't think I like that other team uh, they didn't deserve to win the game they got lucky they didn't deserve to win and then you've got to deal with you know on the news all this stuff oh and the sports reports of hey, you know, this team won tonight, and you're going, no, they didn't. They were lucky. They didn't win. Um, and then there's the you again factor. So, again, coming back to this, when every year you're seeing your team play the same team, whether it's first round, second round, maybe in the conference final. Sometimes we have the same teams meet each other over and over in the conference final. Uh, that repetition can become frustrating, where you're like, yeah, I'm, 
I'm sort of done with watching my team play that team. If you're a Kings fan and next spring they're playing against the Oilers in the first round, you're probably not all that happy about it. And you're probably not a big fan of the Edmonton Oilers right now if you're a Kings fan. Because playoff series and then uh, the, the you again factor would come in next year. But we're already kind of there, right? So that's that's definitely part of what will lead to more more hate. Um, we, we like to see those fresh matchups, but rivalries are fun too, right? Um, and then number five, and this is something that my wife and I've talked about this a lot. Um, there are times where with the channel, I've seen certain fans who are very, very noisy in the comments. And when a team will lose, I will say to her, okay, so that, that guy's going to be all over the comments. He's going to be ticked tonight. He is going to be so mad. But at times with interactions, and this can be in person as well, where maybe you know, uh, a, maybe a friend of yours is, or somebody who's not a friend of yours, somebody that you work with you really can't stand, and you find out he roots for, I don't know, Ottawa. And you're like, you know what? Anybody but Ottawa. Um, that's just no, no to Ottawa. Um, I, I, I remember uh, there was a, a, a a guy that I worked with who was who was from England, and I found out which found out which team he cheered for in England, and I decided I don't like that team anymore because I thought he was obnoxious. So every time they lost a Premier League game, I made sure to mention it to him at work that day, uh, and and it you know because I just wasn't his fan, so I suddenly wasn't a fan of the team, and I didn't really care necessarily, but when they lost, I kind of was like, good, good, because yeah, him and I did not get along, so I was like, you know what, good. Because he could get really obnoxious if they won. There was a one time they won the premiership, and that 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 was miserable. So interactions with other fans can make a difference. Uh, we've seen online uh, where things get ugly in the stands at certain games, and fans will immediately go, "Well, that's those fans. They're that trash." Well, that's those those fans are trash. Uh, there's trash in a lot of fan bases. Just gonna say, they're they're definitely it's there's there's no one fan base that you can just point to and go well that's the obnoxious one the rest of us are all fine uh dirty plays so this comes back to certain players dirty plays can absolutely may have that influence on whether you root for or against a team uh and, and especially again especially in the playoffs it really really gets more amplified uh these past playoffs there were plays that people got really mad about that when i was watching in real time and even watching back on replays i was like you know that's not dirtier than some of the stuff I saw during the regular season. But since it's playoffs and these games mean so much more, people are more upset with what happens. They're more upset with these hits that otherwise they'd be like, well, I don't know that I like that, but yeah, it's five in a game. But during the playoffs, you'd be like, that's it. Suspend him. He's got to go. That's that's filthy. What a dirty player. And one of my favorite things, I've talked about this in videos before too, is Watching as a player will make a dirty play in one series, move on to the next series when they win, and see if it happens again. And if the fan base that they face the next time has that same opinion of the player, very often they don't. Uh, that player will have a bad reputation with one fan base. And I always find that really, really interesting and entertaining. Um, because it really does depend on when you're watching, what you're watching. And again, I, I don't think there's that many players that are actually dirty players that go out there and try to hurt people. I think there's guys who are a bit reckless, and I think that's where we see those plays in the playoffs that make people really angry. Uh, bias from announcers. How many times have we talked about that over the last, I'll say, 12 months, but it feels like it's been a while, uh, especially when it comes to a national broadcast. So, if you're a regional broadcaster and you freak out whenever the Florida Panthers score and it is just the, the, the greatest thing ever, I get it. I get it. But if you're a national broadcaster and you freak out when the Florida Panthers score and you act like it's the greatest thing ever, uh, I mean, now, now, in the Stanley Cup final, you should announce with a lot of a lot of oomph and a lot of excitement, but you shouldn't sound like you're rooting for a team. And one thing I pointed out from these past playoffs was I could tell that broadcasters were not exactly rooting for Dallas. When something good would happen for Dallas, I would hear... That's too bad. And I'd be like, what? Not on a national broadcast. On a regional? Sure. You be as obnoxious and as biased as you want on a regional broadcast. But a national broadcast? Come on now. Try try a little bit. Try to pretend that you, you would like to see this just an even game and you're not really caring about who wins. Do it that way. Just 
please, please for once. And it can make it tough because you hear that bias. I know over the years, people have complained on the American side about how much the Penguins get all the coverage, the Capitals get all the coverage, and it's Ovechkin, it's Crosby, this and that. And then on the Canadian side, it's Leafs everything, right? And Matthews everything. So it will build this resentment from fans without the team even going on the ice, without the team even doing anything. You're already kind of primed for like, I, I don't want them to win because I'm never going to hear the end of it if they do. Uh, an irritating goal song. And this, this was one that Yvonne said, and I was like, you know what? I'll put it on the board because yes, Chelsea Dagger. I guarantee you there are people who didn't like the Chicago Blackhawks during that run where they won three cups in six years in equal parts because of you again. Uh, and sometimes the you again just applies to they're in the final again. Can anybody else get why do we get the same final? Why are we getting the same teams always up there? Right. Um, but that goal song, you got it in your head already. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But that's that's just and. And for Canuck fans, it echoed in our heads for years. So I think there's some PTSD. You play that at a bar in Vancouver, you're going to have some people coming over and asking you to change the music. Because um, people people generally don't, don't want to hear Chelsea Dagger in certain locations. And they're not the only one. I mean, even Toronto, the last year they were using You Make My Dreams by Hall & Oates, I was like, you know what? Maybe they should keep it because it's that right... It's kind of a bit of a bop, and and it, it can be kind of irritating to hear it over and over and over again. So maybe it's kind of the perfect goal song, and then they changed it. So, I, yep, maybe. Um, and then there's this. If you're a Tampa Bay fan, are you mad at the Nashville Preds? Are are you know there's some that I think probably will be. Maybe you get mad at the player. Maybe you're maybe you're mad they defected to another team. Generally, people are mad at the Tampa Bay Lightning for how that all played out. But when a player defects to the other team, so again, if a Canadian goes to Boston, uh, I believe it was Chris Nyland that went from Montreal to Boston and it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel right to him either. There are times where players will cross that line and go, I, I, don't, I don't belong here. I belong over there. I, I play over there. And it, it can be weird to see them in a different jersey. So when a player goes from Vancouver to Calgary and vice versa, there is some oddness to it because they are traditionally rivals. They don't like each other. But they're also rivals that trade with each other a lot. And over the years, there's been so much bleed over between the Canucks and the uh, the, the Flames. It's just odd. But there, there are definitely cases where a player will defect from one team to another. Like, for instance, if Ovechkin signed a contract in Pittsburgh. I don't think people would be all that happy in Washington that he went to Pittsburgh. Just as an example. Just as an example. Um, and then there's the miscellaneous reasons. So I'm trying, trying to catch everything here. Um, now Yvonne mentioned the jersey and the colors and everything. I don't think that's a reason to dislike a team, but maybe, maybe the branding, right? Um, arena presentation. I know when Vegas started out and they had the whole, you know, big pregame, um, deal that they have, which I don't think is, is, I mean, like, is it elaborate? Sure. Creative? Sure. I don't think it's that far off from what other hockey teams were doing, but the arena presentation definitely made some people angry with the Vegas Golden Knights. I thought it was fun. I saw it in person twice. I thought it was fun. Um, and then there's the GM and coach as well. There's that part of it. Sometimes the organization is what you don't like. I don't like that GM. I don't like that coach. That coach coached my team and he sucked here. So I don't want to see him have success elsewhere. That's definitely one of the miscellaneous reasons. It can be almost anything really that can make you decide that you hate on a team. So... My question for all you fine people on the internet with a nice rational discussion, because I'm sure that's how things work on the internet, right? What reason do you have for hating on a team or not hating on a team? Let me know in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the event you've not done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.